Hello everybody, I'm your host Hal Curtis and I'd like to welcome you to The Space Industry by SatSearch, where we share stories about the companies taking us into orbit. In this podcast, we delve into the opinions and expertise of the people behind the commercial space organisations of today who could become the household names of tomorrow. Before we get started with the episode, remember you can find out more information about the suppliers, products and innovations that are mentioned in this discussion on the global marketplace for space at satsearch.com. Hello and welcome to today's episode. I'm joined today by Damien Chamros from Satsuch member company Sat Revolution. Sat Revolution is a Polish new space business founded in 2016 and provides a variety of hardware and data services to space companies all around the world, including hosted payload missions, which is our topic of discussion today. So hello, Damien. Thank you for being with us today. Hi, Howell. Thanks for the introduction and the invitation to this podcast. Great. Well, you're welcome. Right. So let's get into the topic today. How does a hosted payload service work? I mean, what exactly do you expect people to deliver to you as the provider of hosted payload missions? And um, in what sort of timeline do you like them to provide what they need? Okay, so first of all, we focused our uh, initial research and development activities within Sat Revolution to come up with the unified design of the satellite platform known as Unibus platform to provide plug and play connection and integration with the providers of the payloads. So in simple words, there are several new space companies that focus on designing state of the art hardware that needs demonstration in orbit and hosted payload mission gives that ability to our partners and clients to quickly speed up the development process. Such kind of solution requires obviously preparation of the payloads and good communication between Sun Revolution and customer to obtain a clear understanding of the mission as well as provide communication between the payload and the platform. So it's really important at the beginning for us to understand the mission, mission objectives. And in order to do so, we usually provide clients with our internal documents, which are the RFI, Request for Information, and ICD, Interface Control Documentation. This allows us to collect necessary information about the payload, objectives, and obtain connection points between our platform and the payload to estimate the lead time and the whole project. It helps us to combine platform tasking for our primary mission with payload needs. After that, we are working with the customer on PDR and CDR, which lead to the integration process and launch into the orbit which is usually the first milestone of testing the hardware in orbit. So our integration process for the launch provider begins usually three months before the launch. For this reason, we need six to eight weeks before integration to integrate the payloads. The sooner, obviously, we get the payload, the better, so that we can serve our clients according to their needs. Yeah, and that's how I hosted payload mission service and the process with the clients. Interesting. So it's actually quite a rapid process there, um, the three months. So obviously you mentioned that in-orbit demonstrations are so important for new space companies, for companies bringing new innovations to the market. They're the ultimate test of, of a, new, a new product. I mean, to reach that technology readiness level TRL9, the in-orbit demonstration is mandatory. So what types of hosted payloads are you seeing in the market? What sort of uh, technologies are you are you seeing clients try and test? And is there any sort of categorization or segmentation you might be able to discuss? Because our hosted payload mission helps, as you mentioned, other companies to demonstrate the capabilities of their hardware or software during in-orbit operations, we're expecting mostly systems and subsystems that we are providing host payload uh, mission for that have not been space proven yet. So they need still this rapid development. Discussing different types of the hardware that our clients send us as a payload to integrate with the platform consists of various communication hardware, small propulsion systems, computing units for data processing, Earth observation, optical payloads, ADCS software, de- deployable modules, or other uh, CubeSat systems and subsystems. We're currently providing hosted payload missions in the size of three, on, based on the three-unit Unibus platform. 
So typically the payload is between a quarter of a unit up to a unit. So it's also an easy way to segment the clients as our basic hosted payload unit is a quarter of a unit. So if you imagine it, it's 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters by two and a half centimeters, and it's scalable up to this one unit I just mentioned. Now we are discussing actually developing much larger hosted payload missions, which will go up to 24 unit satellite. And these are focused more around launch service providers that would like to provide a hosted payload mission in more optimal manner. As you might know, launch service provider is usually focused on the primary payload rather than secondary payloads. So Sad Revolution is helping to connect smaller companies with large operators of the rocket systems so that everyone can succeed in building their business. Another part that we are seeing growing interest in are the companies who are providing the hardware such as computers and already inbuilt algorithmical processing capabilities. That way, not every piece of data that we collect via the satellite must be downlinked firstly in order to be processed. It might be processed even in orbit, and that allows larger, for example, quantity of data to meet the uh, customer or the data that the customer actually needs, rather than, for example, with optical systems that the analysis of the cloud image. The reason for that is also the fact that our every satellite is equipped with our optical payload, and that allows companies not only to test their components in orbit, but actually test them with real case scenario, with real mission, so that their hardware can be then used on commercial missions, whether with Sun Revolution or other companies. So I think this answers the questions. One thing to mention is that working with those typical three-unit satellites has this limitation of the typical payload. We're focusing on the CubeSat standard, so this is enough. But as I mentioned, the forthcoming missions will be designed for also six-unit and 24-unit satellite size. Interesting. So there's quite a wide range of both the technology that um, you you are hosting and the configurations that it might take. Now you mentioned there's some of the not the limitations, but the the way that the volumes are dealt with and some of the systems, the way the systems are integrated. There are there also limits in terms of mass and data rates. I know you mentioned that there's, there's the optical downlink, but you know are there things that providers of technology to be tested need to take into account? So masses of the payloads that we have uh, successfully integrated and uh, we are currently integrating are really wide and they depend on the payload nature. We've seen payloads that range from tens of grams up to even a kilogram, which is that typically just under one unit size. The heaviest payloads are usually the propulsion and earth observation subsystems and their weight is usually around one kilogram. Also regarding the data rates, it depends on the payload specification and available power in orbit. For example, computing units and Earth observation payloads are consuming much more data stream than propulsion system. So this is very important for uh, for us to identify the mission objectives for the clients so that uh, we can also accommodate different clients on different missions because as the name suggests, hosted payload mission means that a couple of clients might fly on the same platform and demonstrate their technology readiness level on such a mission. In our interest and our client's interest is to be able to provide the system which will demonstrate the mission objectives and help those companies deliver their payloads and prove them in orbit. With such a wide variety of payloads and, like you say, multiple payloads from different customers on the same system, it must come across sort of some pretty big challenges in managing the interfaces between your systems and your your hosted payloads. Yes, so that's why very early in the process, we include that specification so that at the preliminary stage of the design, we can understand what systems will be integrated, what are the interfaces between the client's payloads and our bus 
And as you said, working with many customers at once is a challenge itself. Every customer has a different working culture, different communication style and specific requirements and expectations. Some companies have great teams of software developers. They can develop payload controllers and uh, things like this on their own, while other companies require our help within the whole process of not only integration, but also during design of their payload to understand how really the satellite will be providing the service and communicating with ground segment, for instance. So besides that, we must provide reliable and safe service so that we need to work with the payload providers to ensure that payload is designed according to the needs, but also according to the standards of our platform. Sometimes if those standards are not uh, met, namely they are different, we can provide the interconnectors that can provide a link between different standards, between the payload and the hosted payload platform. Do you find it necessary to try and make the, the integration process more seamless? I know you mentioned engaging early is one way of doing it, but do you also find the need to provide advice or, or even mandatory requirements on the testing that payload developers need to undertake? And do, you, do you have any advice for them as they build in their system? Okay, so as you said at the beginning, this is a rapid development that under three months we want to accomplish understanding of the payload, payload objective, and integrate it successfully with our forthcoming mission. Obviously, there is ongoing push from the industry to decrease, to narrow down this time as we see the whole industry going into direction of rapid launches which will be allowed to launch your satellite within days. That's why understanding how the payload must be integrated with our bus platform is really, really important. There are a couple of standards introduced by larger companies and our the processors, so that I would suggest to you know use the standards that are already out there, but not to really, really, and then discuss with the integrator or hosted payload mission provider like Sun Revolution, whether those standards are something that we are usually working with or whether we recommend other, other integration. So, you know, companies usually, they have a way of thinking how things should be done, which is then, then verified by the industry. And this is valuable lessons that we get from all our clients to really understand what interfaces and integration process must take place and to in order to assist our clients in the most time-effective manner as everyone's objective is to launch satellites quicker and cheaper. Absolutely, makes sense. Now, just to turn attention to kind of looking at the results that a payloads provider would would expect or would you know be working towards as part of the mission, a lot of the payload data delivery that that goes on, you know, happens through the cloud. Are there specific requirements that payload developers, you know, need to adhere to to maintain the proprietary nature of their results and data, particularly in cases where, you know, these are confidential? And also you mentioned that um, how much payload processing is ongoing, where data is being processed on board and then only a certain amount of it, the, re the relevant aspects of it are downlinked, which also has, you know, an impact on, proprietary nature, confidentiality. Are there cases, you know, where Sat Revolution is not even able to access certain parts of the data, but just provides a secure channel for the payload developer in order to maintain security? I wonder if you could just discuss that topic a little bit. Okay, sure. So first of all, most of our missions, host payload missions, are shared missions where the technology demonstrations are conducted. These types of missions usually do not transfer very sensitive data although obviously we work with all our clients under signed non-disclosure agreements and clients do not tend to have high encryption requirements, most of which are the TLE data. Of course, two-way communication with the satellite takes place over an encrypted connection and the data sent between the Sun Revolution and payload developer is sent via a secured route to, let's say, hide payload data from us as a satellite platform operator, the payload must have its own en encryption systems built in and send data that can be ready only by the payload owner. So answering your question, that means that if a client has this need, 
there are ways to accommodate that sensitivity of data. However, usually the clients transfer small amount of data over the life cycle of the satellite. They are not that sensitive as far as we are currently concerned. But if there are clients who are worried about that, we can definitely figure out the way that data is owned and then not accessed by sub revolution. But it's, again, every hosted payload mission approach and design, it's discussed case by case with the client to meet their needs. Sure. So the, the requirements for an in-orbit demonstration uh you know, a lot less than uh, if if you were providing access to a, a service that was supposed to operate for a few years. So that absolutely makes sense. And it's great for the client side, for the hosted uh, payload providers side, that those uh, options are there where required. Now, uh, another area that's quite interesting, I think, in a hosted mission is the launch aspect, because launches can sometimes fail through obviously no p- fault of your own and maybe not even the fault of the launch (laughs) vehicle provider. Are there options for insuring missions, you know, against any failures, including launch or even on-orbit performance? Okay, so firstly, I'm going to say no risk, no fun, (laughs) but most of developers in this business are because we actually, we embrace risk and we try to, you know, limit the amount, obviously, of risk that is associated with the launch. Some risks we can control, others are you know, not dependent on our service. They depend on the launch service providers. And yes, there are options for this kind of insurance, but from our experience, they are very expensive and they are not usually and commonly practiced during the CubeSat demonstration missions. For the developers of constellations, obviously this is a factor that should be accounted for while preparing a detailed financial plan and then to account those risks Perhaps it's sometimes worth taking that insurance on. But from our experience, new space idea is to provide cheap and quick access to space. And these costs sometimes as per insurance are just overwhelming for these demonstration missions. So they are not used by our clients. But if again, the client needs insurance, we can provide the access to companies, you know, who are doing it as their core business and providing insurance for their satellite launchers and operators. Right, great. Yeah, I think from you know other discussions we've had and trends we've seen in the industry, the people who are carrying out in orbit demonstration missions who are trying to get the equipment tested are almost you know willing to see the process as as iterative development, which includes a, a level of potential failure. So that uh, that tallies with the, with the, that trend we've seen. And another. A trend or or a term that's sort of become a bit more prominent in the industry is space as a service, space as a service missions. How does that differ or does it differ from a hosted payload mission? Of course, there is a difference. And I think it's a fundamental difference when we think about uh, the business model in which we organize a hosted payload mission and the space as a service mission. First of all, most payloads don't need full in-orbit operating time to prove their space heritage and demonstration of the functionalities of the technology. For this reason, the hosted payload mission allows our customers to share the platform and operating time with other payloads. That means this approach leads to the cost reduction for space demonstration in comparison to the space as a service mission in which a client would need to develop their own satellite on platform, then launch the satellite and basically just do it even, you know, with us, but then have the whole satellite dedicated to their operations. That's why we see space as a service missions as the missions for more mature technology owners or the developers of constellations, as they want to make sure that the satellites are providing the service 24 seven sometimes. And um, this time, operating time is not shared uh, with other clients and payloads. On another hand, in the hosted payload mission, there is always the main payload. So like with the big rocket, you've got your primary clients and secondary clients. And for in, this approach also allows us to design the mission in the way that all the customers are satisfied with the time they're getting while being in orbit. Compared with satellite as a service mission, this one is designed directly for one customer and their payload. 
And the final mission type really depends on the customer needs and the flexibility according to the mission scenario we are provided by the client. It sounds like a really interesting area, how you get to see these new bits of innovation kind of tested in space before anybody else, because you know, you're, you're providing access to the data that's proved that they work or not. And so uh, it must be interesting, that aspect of it. I guess another question is if you could tell us some details about any specific missions that SAP Revolution has coming up that include possibilities for hosted payloads, just to give people a sense of how this, this service actually works. Okay, so at this moment, we are finishing the manufacturing integration of the satellites for our July uh, launches. And those calls for hosted payloads, as you can imagine, are closed due to the time uh, when we need to send them uh, to be integrated with the launch service provider. The next launch for the hosted payload mission is planned for December 2021. And uh, this time we'll put into orbit another three three unit uh, satellites with at least three quarters of a unit space for hosted payloads missions each. Obviously, if we see more demand in the forthcoming months, we can extend that as we've got many options to put our satellites in orbit with several launch service providers that you know are coming more and more to the uh, development level in which we are we are sure that we can deliver our satellites into the orbit. The satellites that are being sent as a part of Store Constellation, they all go to the approximately 500 kilometer SSO orbit. And uh, they all capable of providing pictures in the medium resolution frame, which we defined as below five meters. And you're open to the clients of, who are providing the hosted payloads to interact with the data that you're collecting on, the, on board? Exactly. So as mentioned before, we're looking for a wide range of hardware that we can put on those missions. One of the reasons for that is also that as we're developing our REC constellation, we are looking for the new space hardware that we can integrate for our forthcoming missions, such as, for example, propulsion systems, you know, new coming computers that will give us this AI ML cutting edge capability to process data on board. We're looking for the companies developing those algorithms that could be installed on the computers that are in space. We're looking for the companies who are developing optical systems uh, sometimes as well. So there is really wide range of the hardware that we can put on the hosted payload mission. And we do not want to discourage anyone from those missions. And if there is a need for additional uh, design, larger platform, as I said, uh, we are ready to start providing uh, such a type of a satellite. Great. I think it's a really interesting approach. You, you know, developing the potential supply chain for, for your own business as well as giving op opportunities to companies trying to bring their products to market. So best of luck with the missions in July and December. And just to, just to wrap up, I think maybe putting you on the spot a little bit. How do you see this market for hosted payload missions, for in orbit demonstrations, verification? How do you see it evolving over the next? three to five years, sort of obviously your mission's in December. So maybe beyond that, what do you think's going to happen in the market next? What are you most excited about? Okay, so we are very excited about forthcoming missions as we are still seeing growing and developing demand for such a service, especially that are new developers coming to the market who want to test their hardware on bigger and bigger platforms. So one thing we definitely see is the increase of the satellite size in order to meet the demand for testing larger payloads, which makes a lot of opportunities for hosted payload missions. Even the bigger companies are now looking at this market as it gives them the ability to test R&D products, new products coming out from other JV corporation. And this is very exciting uh, trend for us, which leads to ensure access to the space is as easy as never before. Having that said, I'm also very excited, not only about hosted payload missions that are targeting the orbits around the Earth, but also the hosted payload missions that will be offered for the clients uh, in the whole solar system, starting with the hosted payload missions to the Moon or Mars, you know, even in three to five uh, years uh, time frame, if not earlier. Yeah, I think... Um... 
it's hard not to be excited about those opportunities and the lunar you know orbit potential and the deep space mission potential is something that quite a few companies have actually brought up on this podcast and we've seen in the in the industry people discussing so it's an exciting time to be in in this area i was going to say in the space but obviously we're all in the space i think that's a great place to wrap up damien thank you very much for sharing all the the insights uh, from how sat revolution runs these types of missions i think the audience will certainly have learned a lot and be a lot more uh, informed when looking to bring their own products and services to market and what the what part of the, the the important part of the process is for them to do that so thank you for spending time with us today Thank you very much for this opportunity and having this chance to discuss our hosted payload missions. For everyone listening, I would like to emphasize that all current payload interfaces are supported by Sad Revolution, and we can definitely be looking forward to hosting you on our forthcoming missions. Great, thanks. And to all our listeners out there, if you'd like to find out more about those missions, as well as the rest of Sad Revolution's products and services, you can find them on the Sat Search platform. On the Marketplace, you can also make free requests for further technical details, documentation such as CAD models, datasheets and ICDs, quotes for products and services, introductions to companies, or whatever else you might need for your space procurement. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Space Industry by SatSearch. I hope you enjoyed today's story about one of the companies taking us into orbit. We'll be back soon with more in-depth, behind-the-scenes insights from private space businesses. In the meantime, you can go to satsearch.com for more information on the space industry today or find us on social media if you have any questions or comments. To stay up to date, please subscribe to our weekly newsletter and you can also get each podcast on demand on iTunes, Spotify, the Google Play Store or whichever podcast service you typically use.